Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire took what the first three Harry Potter games did, but made it better. Yeah! This is what fans expected when they bought a copy of Goblet of Fire back in 2005. Instead, they got a crappy level-based game with zero to no effort put into it. Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire is simply just not a good game. Instead of following the previous three games in the series, EA decided to go a completely different route with Goblet of Fire. The game has the players select one of eight levels to play. Just like the last game, you can play as Harry, Ron, and Hermione. Before you start a level, choose who you want to play as. Four out of the eight levels can collect a number of Triwizard Shields, which will unlock the next level. The game follows the movie more than the books. Characters are modeled after the actors in the movie, unlike the previous games where the characters resembled a description of the characters in the books. What this game does, more than any of the other games, is actually really manage to capture the look of the actors who play the various characters. I was shocked at how much it actually looks like me, which I've never really had to deal with before, but it's scarily looking like me now. I, I met the guy who, who was making me it's just strange knowing that this guy had been obsessively <laughs> looking at details of just your teeth or whatever, just trying to get them exactly the same. Three levels in the game are the Triwizard tasks, and the last level is a boss fight between Voldemort. During these four levels, you can only play as Harry, which gives you four levels to freely play as Harry, Ron, or Hermione. The game looks incredible compared to others. The lighting and the scenery are quite simply impressive. When I first got into the game, I thought it was a major step up from Prisoner of Azkaban. But boy was I wrong. Another thing I liked that most people did not were the cutscenes. Although lazy, I loved the way it was presented. To me, it almost seemed like a storybook, and I really enjoyed that. I also loved being able to play as Harry Ron or Hermione. In Azkaban, you alternated between the three in the game as you needed them. In Goblet, you choose who you want to play as before you start a level. I think my favorite levels were the Triwizard tasks. Difficult at times, I found myself enjoying most of it. The first task was my personal favorite. Unfortunately, there are more negatives than positives for this game. My biggest issue with the game is the automatic camera. In the previous three games, you could control where you want the camera to point. In Goblet, this is not the case. The automatic camera works for a lot of games, if it's done right. In this case, it is not done right at all. Now, I'm not saying it's bad all the time, but when it doesn't work properly, it's hard to see where you are, where you need to go, and cast spells you need to cast. Another thing I could not stand was how bad the AI was. I played as Hermione for most of the game, and for the most part, it was fine. But when you needed the other two's help, in my case, Harry and Ron, the AI just didn't seem to understand that you needed them. For example, to move a big rock, all three players must cast the Guardian Leviosa spell at the rock in order to move it. Well, half the time, Harry and Ron would just stand there doing absolutely nothing, or one of them would help while the other one would walk around confused. This makes the levels extremely long as you have to go up to the other characters to try and guide them to help. One thing that aggravated me was one of the creatures you had to fight. I honestly don't know how to say this creature's name, but I'm just going to call it the Mosque because that's part of the name. This thing is the most annoying thing I have ever had to deal with in a Harry Potter video game. It would sting you, and while you were on the ground, it would sting you again, giving you very little time to actually defeat the creature. The worst part was in the Herbology level, where you had to use the Carpe Retracting spell. The Carpe Retracting spell is basically a pull charm. You would use the spell to grab onto a gate or a bridge, pull it towards you to open up a new area. Well, to get a Triwizard Shield in the Herbology level, you would have to bring down a bunch of bridges to get to the shield. It took me about two days to actually get the shield because I would kill the moss and more would just keep spawning in over and over and over again, and would not die, and I could not get the bridge down without the moss killing me. This is just one example of how frustrating the game can get. In conclusion, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire tried and failed to separate itself from an already amazing video game series. 
It's clear to me that EA had no intention of putting actual effort into Goblet as it did the other games. I give Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire a 6 out of 10. I enjoyed some parts, but others were just too bad to ignore. Will EA redeem themselves with Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix? Or will it just be another crappy game to tie in with the movies? What do you think? Is Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire a good game? Could we see a Goblet of Fire remastered for the next gen consoles? Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Oh yeah, one more thing. What is up with Ron and his beans? God. A bean!